<laughs> okay. <laughs> Last week, huh. we had a big happy party, right? Yeah. And it was wedding party for Matthew and y u n j a n g We congratulate yeah. you again. <laughs> And it was just a happy moment. We had a good time, and they become officially Mr. and Mrs. Parsons. Okay, it was really, you know, good weather, as you see in the background. It was so nice, crispy air, you know, and the uh, sun was, you know, so bright at that time. So I'm sure God gave you guys a blessings of blessings. Amen. 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 Okay, so. What is the main purpose of marriage? What is Matthew? What is your main purpose of marriage? Why? Why did you get married? <laughs> so you, you, it's okay. It's you, you, you don't have to know. I will tell you. Okay. <laughs> you will be perfect. So I don't want to make you a hard time. Right now. Anyway. So uh, I'm sure you know Matthew loves you, right? It, it could be because of love, but is it? Is it all? You know. And or to have children, and you know they, some people they get married in, in long time. You know, in Korean history, without love, they just you know um, have have to combine or something like that, and to have babies. So, and maybe this is you know uh, you you have just thought that oh, you need to get married, can't you need to get married, and everybody says that right. So marriage. Okay, so you just you just uh, get the peer pressure out of your <laughs> culture, right? And uh, I need to get married, especially whenever you are your one of your best friends, you know, when they get married, then you think about it, okay, right? And actually, when I when I got married, I was the first one among my you know group of gangs, you know, <laughs> my my friend, and then within three years. All other guys, you know, my my friends, they got married. So it, I don't know, you know, what happened, but you know, it, it is there's some kind of chain reaction. So when they get married, anyway. So what is the purpose? All these, you know, are these all real, you know, reasons that we can marry? No. 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 The concepts of wedding or getting married is these are or, also not right. These are okay, you know. Because of love, having children, or because of cultural thing, it, it is okay. But but one thing I can say that is people will uh, get married in the future because God God allowed us to do so. We just read it, right? God, okay. God allowed us to get married, but the concept has been changed over time. What is the real meaning? So uh, that could be attacked by you know Satan or influenced by people's mind, like in, in the form of culture, right? It has been changed. So in this situation, we will investigate what is the biblical view of marriage, okay? And please have a concrete concept after you know this sermon, okay? The concept of what is the real meaning of marriage. Which is you know told by the Bible. Okay, so next slide. So you may notice that there is a wedding story at the start of the Bible, and we just read it. Who were the first couple? Adam and Eve. And similarly, the you know if you look at the at the Revelations, which is last part of the Bible. There is another wedding story in Revelations in chapter 21 to 22. There comes okay, New Jerusalem castle, New Jerusalem coming down from heaven from God, which is made by God, and prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. So that is like in in this passage, you know, beautifully dressed for her husband. That means wedding, right? And angel said to John in Revelation 21, verse 9. Let's read it all together. Come, I'll show, I'll show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. Okay, bride and wife of the Lamb. So that, that means wedding, right? So now, start of the Bible 
It, it starts with wedding, right? And at the end of the Bible, there's another wedding. Let's keep going. And he carried me away in the spirit to the mountain great and high, and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. God. In addition, you know, so uh, now things are clear, right? Start, end of the Bible, there is wedding ceremonies, right? And in addition, the old heaven and heaven and earth is gone before that time, before this time. And why, you know, why do the old heaven and earth have to be gone at the time? Because the old heaven and earth, they, they have done their, their works. So we don't need it anymore, old heaven and earth. At this point, you should realize that all the things under 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 this world are going to be uh, going to be gone once the purpose of God is accomplished. Okay, okay. So this is one destination, and we have one you know purpose of God that that why we are here. Including, you know, that, that kind of questions, okay? So, let me go back to Genesis. When God created heaven and earth, God always said that it was good. Next slide. God always said it was good. You remember that? When God created light, God said it was good. And when God created sky and land, God said it was good. And when God created plants on the land, and stars and sun and moon in the sky, all kinds of animals. When God created, created, God said it was good. But God said only thing, it's not good. What was it? Oh no. Okay, uh, you you already forgot. Okay, let's go back to today's words of God. Okay, before that, okay, on the top. What do you see? The Lord said, it is not good. What's not good? It was not good. One thing is, okay, it is written, written in, in this, this universe, it is not good for the man to be alone. So, like God said, this, like just being alone is not good for Adam. So, what did he do? He, he made, he made Eve. Eve. Okay, but, but before that, it is written in uh, Genesis 2.18, which are the first of the, today's verse, I just showed you, and you may think God wants us to get married. And so, did, does God wants us to get married then? Since God created us and He allowed us. But, you may think, you know, uh, God wants us to get married but is this the final purpose of uh, you know purpose of us to get married no it's not that like that so what do you think about jesus jesus he lived as a single guy right and he finished his life like that and what about you know apostle paul he he, he wrote you know majority of portion of the you know, new testament he was a single guy. And then, what about the lives of 12 apostles? And did they have a good relationship with their, you know, married, in, in their, their married life? No, they didn't have. So, so it, it seems to us, you know, just have a happy life with a married life is not the final purpose of God, right? So, but it is tool for God, but the final purpose. So, next slide. Let's go back to the fundamental question. So, before we talk about, you know, the marriage, why don't we ask about, you know, our existence? You know, why did God create, create us? Okay? Before thinking about if, why did God create Adam, the God, does anybody have any answer for that? Why did God create us, make us? 
he he doesn't have anything, you know. He doesn't have any. He he didn't need anything, you know. So why did he? He, as we know, you know, God is love, right? God is love. God made an object of His love. If you are alone in in, in the whole world. You are so lonely, right? You need another person to love, right? God created Adam as an object of his love. Love needs another person, another being. Right? Is that is that right? Does it make sense to you guys? Andy? Is it right? Okay. <laughs> so when I said God created us, it, it means we are the creatures of God. So did you make any you know uh, figures without out of you know mud, clay or something like that? Can you can you love it? Okay, maybe you you liked it, but you didn't, you don't love it. So God created Adam an object of love. When when I say that God created us, it means we are the creatures. So so um, in these days there are some movies about AI and robots, right? And some movies talk about that we can fall in love with AI or robots. But, but there are some movies, lots of them coming out in these days, including K drama and things like that, right? You have you've seen that, right? And do you think that's gonna happen? Uh, I don't think so. So why? Why is it? The okay, the AI of robots? You know, they are not the same as us. You know, whatever we made is below us, right? The, the, the level of being is not equal to us. But think about God. God created us. Okay? So, you think uh, that's gonna, there's going to be true love between God and His creature, like us? What do you think about that? So that doesn't make sense a little bit, right? Now, so what is the God's solution for that? What is God's solution for that? Then, God's solution is He wants to raise our status to be the level of God. God raises our, you know, we that we are human beings, but God wants us, you know, God wants, he, he wants us to be raised to the level of God that He can have true love among us. Amen? Amen. So that's why God created Eve as a helper. And that's why God created the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That's why God created sin out of this tree. And that's also the Satan also used as a tool for our salvation. Why do you need salvation? Because you have sinned. Right? So why did you have sinned against God? Because of Adam's, you know, behavior along with Eve. They, 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 they sinned against God because of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Right? That, does that make sense now? Right? Is that too, too much for you guys? <laughs> okay. So, okay. So using all these tools and, you know, including the sin and tree of the knowledge of good and evil and Satan, Throughout our you know, lifetime, God wants us to have eternal life through Jesus Christ. Amen? God wants us to be saved. That's what we call salvation. Right? So, I think everybody is in, in this status by believing Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. So, uh, let's focus on how, how God created Eve. Okay, in Genesis 2.21, let's read it all together. So the Lord our God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep, and while he was sleeping, 
He took one of the man's ribs and closed up the place with flesh. When when Bible says a deep sleep, that means what? That means death. Okay. And in other word, in other words, Adam was dead at that time. And according to Rome, Romans 5:14, Paul said that Adam, who was a pattern of the one to come. Who is the one to come? Jesus. Jesus Christ. So this means Jesus Christ. It also represents the death of Jesus Christ on the cross. And as evidence, when a soldier, you know, pierced Jesus' side with a spear, there was a sudden flow of blood and water. You remember that, right? And this is the somebody, you know, this could be somebody who is cre created by the blood of water of Jesus Christ's side. Who are they? We are, we are the ones who are created by Jesus's, from the Jesus' side, right? We are the Christians, right? It would be man and woman, and it could be you and I. So we are the ones. Now, Eve was created and brought to Adam, right? And, and Eve was, uh, Adam and Eve, they were free of sins. Before they are eating the, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, that's too long, right? The name is too long. Anyway, so when, uh, when she was brought to Adam, Adam said, this is, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. Isn't this amazing poem, right? <laughs> right, this is amazing. Some, you know, pastors, some pastors, they use these verses uh, at the wedding, you know, uh, ceremony. And, but, you know, I, I want you to practice once, you know. Guys, when you, when you meet a mutual love, <laughs> why don't you say, you are my bone of bones and flesh of my flesh. Let's practice it. <laughs> Let's read it. Let's you read it all together. You are my bone of my bones, bones and flesh of my flesh. flesh. Then, you know, <laughs> you, you know, the one who hears this will be you know, amazed. How did you get to know that? <laughs> right? Anyway, now you are ready, ready to meet your significant other. Okay? You guys are ready. So it means you are the most important person in my life. That means, right? So, but, but for what? Let me ask you, for what? What purpose you are important? You are most important important person in my life and Adam knew it but you know it's not written in the Bible and the purpose is to be the bride of God amen this is the main purpose of marriage in, in, in uh, that Bible is telling us so by changing the sin okay now because of the suitable help, helper Eve is a suitable help, helper Adam and Eve, they, now, because of this suitable helper, what happened after having Eve? They, they ate the fruit of the tree of knowledge and good and evil. Because of, like, without her, we, we, we don't have to have sin, you know? But, you know, when I, when I first read the Bible, I really didn't like this. You know, verses. Why did God make the make this tree, and why did God, you know, uh, gave Adam, you know, out of Adam, you know, himself, and God made it right from the rib. So, why did God, you know, do it? What do you think about that? Okay, so was it the uh, in, in plan of God, everything. How was it? And later on, I realized that everything was 
in God's plan. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Why? You, you guys don't say amen, yeah, right? <laughs> you don't agree with me, but you will. Yes, all these happenings were in God's plan. When they have the fruit of the tree of knowledge of the good and evil, the standard, okay? Once they ate it, what happened to them? They, the standard of good and evil, decision of good and evil was determined by themselves. Before that, who got it? God. So before eating the fruit, the standard of the good and evil was decided by God. But after eating it, the decision is on us. Okay? So, but we, but another thing, you know, we lost our eternal life. Okay? We, are, we all are under the power of death by, the, by sinning against God. Does that make sense? Now we gain something, but we lose the big thing. We got, you know, uh, we, we can determine what's good and evil. We got to know it, but we lost our life. We are under the power of death. Let me ask you, uh, was it the, uh, uh, are these, you know, right thing to, yeah, I mean, the, are they going the right way or not? Were they going the right way or not? They were going into the right way. This is what God planned us to, to be and to go. How do we know? Okay, like I told you before, to get married, the husband and wife should be the same kind of you know, class or level, right? I, I talked about you know, love uh, with AI or robots. You said no, right? So we should be the same level as God. So do you need any evidence for that? Let's read Genesis 3.22. And the Lord, the Lord God said, the man has now become like one of us, knowing good and evil. So, after eating the fruit and they, their level is getting close to God that they can discern what's good and evil, but they fall short of God because they sin against God. Okay? So, it's for, for the perfect love, there must be a free will decision. Okay. What is the requirements of you know, love that you think. When you meet, uh, you know, your love, what is, what is the requirement? First thing is, there should be a free will decision, and another thing is, should be the same level. You, you may think you love your dogs, or you know, the, the pets, but actually you like them, because they are not in the level of human being, right? So, <laughs> You may say it's love, but you know, that, that doesn't make sense. Love means you can love the equal you know, um, opponents, like another human being, right? So, the, after having the self king, you know, have self king of each of them for Adam and, Eve, Adam and Eve, they started to blame to each other because they are right and you, I am right, you are wrong, right? <laughs> That's the biggest problem when, when, when a couple got married. <laughs> I am right, you are wrong. <laughs> and sometimes between you know, uh, parents and a, a child, that's, that's another problem. I am right, you are wrong. That's because we ate the fruit of knowledge of good and evil. Yeah, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. That's why I'm, I think I'm always right. So without that kind of you know, righteousness, my own righteousness, is hard to live anyway in this world, right? So, let me tell you, okay, but we have to, we have to overcome our, you know, blessings of, you know, eternal life. Because uh, by the sinning against God, so we have to re restore our blessings through, how do we get it? Through Jesus Christ. Amen. Living Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. 
Okay, let me tell you the secret of Mary's again. Okay? Um, around the age of puberty, one imagines a dream girl or dream, you know, boyfriend, right? The age of puberty, okay? So why are we looking for, you know, for a perfect love? You see the picture, you know, guys are looking for the <laughs> snow white or, or <laughs> something like that. that. And women, they, they always looking for, you know, uh, a princess on a white horse, right? So this desire starts in teenage uh, and lasts until you die. Let me tell you, until you die. I, you know, I asked my mother, you know, they, they, uh, she goes to senior, senior's place and there are some, you know, ladies who started, you know, the, uh, having date with another, <laughs> another grandpa <laughs> and they used to say that the feeling is the same, the feeling is the same, so it lasts. Han Jung Sang says it's scary, but you know this is this is what we are. That the most common you know love story consists of a rich guy and good-looking guy and a pretty lady. Uh, usually, you know she's kind of poor, right? <laughs> and and there must be another man and woman who bothers you know in the love line of this you know the main characters, right? They bothers you know to they get uh, when they trying to get close right, and why is it? And we we always we are so interested in in this kind of love story, and when they produce that kind of stories and films and dramas, we all crazy about it. We know what's going on, but we still watch those movies and dramas, right? Why is it? Because it's because. Because it is caused by the cravings of our spirit. It's not because of you. It, inside of your spirit, you have cravings for that kind of story. Okay? Actually, we all are longing for our spiritual husband. Who is? Who is? It? Who is? It? He is Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? Are you still looking for your, your another <laughs> love? Okay. So please remember that you cannot find this kind of this kind of person. You cannot find in this world. Please do not keep changing your husband or boyfriend or girlfriend <laughs> or like Samaritan woman. Right? We already have lessons learned. When she met Jesus Christ, she had a uh, you know, fountain of water inside of her, right? So, Samari when Samaritan woman met Jesus Christ, I think she, she didn't get married again. <laughs> I don't think so. Anyway, because the reason that we are keep looking for dream person like this is because of our cravings. So, that craving can be satisfied only by Jesus Christ. Yes. There are three types of... Okay, when you get married, okay? Uh, the life becomes better, or what do you think? It could be better, right? For a while. But for a while, and then... And then there, could, there is going to be some hard times. It happened to me when I got married. And I think it's going to happen to everybody, including one recent couple. <laughs> anyway, you know why? Why is it happening? Why is it happening? Okay, there are three types of sins in our lives. Okay, we have original sin that Adam did by eating the fruit of the tree of, of knowledge of good and evil. And at the same time, we have sins, in our, uh, sins that are coming from our family tree. Your mother, your father, grandma, grand, grandpa. It goes up to three or four generations, according to Bible. Okay? And including, you have your own sins that you committed in your lifetime. Those sins, okay? The sins from your family 
through husband's side and wife's side. And when they get married, they get combined. And then, it, it's, it's going to bo boil out a little bit. And then finally, it blows up. Okay, eventually, because of the sins that we have, two sides of family, when they get married, they have you know, synergy effect. <laughs> okay. So the, the married couple has to fight against this kind of you know, spiritual you know, activation of the sins. They have to fight against it, fight against it. And from the husband's and wife's side. So there must be hard times. But God wants us to fight against it and to be the one who overcomes and wins with prayers with the blood of Jesus. I bless, you know, Matthew and Yoon Jung that they can be the one couple who overcomes all the curses and sins from, from their families. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. Be the one who overcomes. Okay? Amen. Amen. So, there are types of sins of uh, <laughs> so the final purpose of marriage is to be and um, to be the bride of Jesus Christ and you also guide your loved one to be the bride of Jesus Christ. So this is uh, you should have a win-win situation by you know um, getting married. You help each other actually to be the bride of Jesus Christ. So how can he be the bride of Jesus Christ through the marriage? Okay, let me give you the seven you know main points. Okay, the first requirements to to have a successful marriage life is we need Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So on the cross, Jesus shed blood and water on the side, and when swords are pierced on on his his side. So when you have hard time. You can get over the problem with the help of Holy Spirit. Amen? That's the first thing. And the second thing is the love of Christ for the churches. Ephesians 5.25, let's read it. Husband, do I have it? No. no. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the, the church and gave himself up for her. So, husband, Matthew, please love your, your wife, Yoon Jung, okay? And like Jesus loved his churches. Amen? So, this is the unconditional love that he, we cannot do ourselves, but we can try with help of Holy Spirit. Okay. So, we can try. So, remember this unconditional love should only be applied within within marriage relationship you 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 know love others other girls you know like your wife okay so within this marriage relationship so this means exclusive love between Jesus and churches and wife and husband the same so um, Paul says in Ephesians 5 25 now as a church submit to Christ so the wives should submit their husband in everything. So, we have to, uh, you know, the wives should be submitted by husband. So that's the, the second thing. So, third thing is that husband, husband need to leave his parents when, uh, when he gets married. That means, all of us need to leave our old things, old customs. So when we get married, that's a new, life, new chapter of your life through the marriage. So this is, this means that you need to be independent and you need to be mature. So mature means you need, you are going to be independent in your life. Okay? So when it comes to the matter, matter of faith, it requires individual faith. So when you are judged at the, the great white throne, before God, you are judged with your own faith. 
So this is an individual thing. Even though you love your husband or wife, you cannot, you know, if, even though your wife is sick, I cannot take her pain. So the faith is individual thing. So you need to leave your old situations and old customs. Okay, that's the third thing. And first thing is that a couple needs to be one flesh. Okay, so uh, I put the equation there. One plus one equals what? Two. One. Is that two? One. In, in, it's a question mark. So what, what would be the answer? One. One, yes. This is training to be uh, a unit, just one. And especially in a church, there are some people who never open their hearts or never, you know, um, show their, their deep inside of their mind. Some people, they do that. But especially with a marriage uh, you know, relationship, they, they have to be one. There shouldn't be any secrets or hiding things between a uh, husband and wife. So the, this is a training of being united. Starts with married couple and God also wants us to be one family in our in, in our church. Amen. Amen? Yeah. The fifth thing is that a man and his wife were they were naked and they felt no shame. And we all have some kind of you know, shame in us because of sins in us. Not to be, you know, but there shouldn't be any shame within a couple. So one needs to uh, accept others' weak, weak points. And there are things that cannot be, you know, corrected. Maybe like uh, you will have someday uh, your loved, loved one, but you, you want you want you know uh, another one to be uh, to correct some habit or some specific things, but you cannot correct. It. Okay, so don't make it big thing. You know, just accept that as a weak point, so you can cover it. Amen. So cover others' shame within a couple, not not with your you know friends or you don't, you don't have to do it, but. With especially within a couple, in a married couple, you have to cover others' shame. Amen? The sixth thing is that we need to be patient. This is a character of agape love. And when we get married, uh, this would be the first thing that you will list, uh, learn to keep your relationship, okay? Being patient, okay? So it is also mentioned by Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, okay? Do you want to keep your married life in your future or current one? Then you need to be patient to your loved one. Because you love, you can be patient. Okay? Amen? So last thing, seventh thing is do not make idols in your family, especially so nobody can take place of God in your mind, especially, you know, uh, easily, you know, uh, moms, they, they can have your, uh, their children as idols. Mm -hmm. So you have to look into your mind, deep inside of your mind, that your children or husband, uh, they don't take God's place in your mind. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay, summary. So, Bible starts with the wedding story and it ended up with another wedding, right? So, I gave you the examples and verses too. So, God created us to love and He wants to raise our status at the same level of God for the true love, right? Uh, I gave you also the no, verses related to this statement. And Eve was created as a suitable help, helper to Adam. To, the, what is the final purpose of that? To be bride of Jesus Christ. We can help each other to be the bride of Christ within 
the relationship called you know married life. Okay, marriage. Okay. So uh, by Eve, you know we all are under the sin by having the fruit of knowledge of good and evil. We all have our own standard, and then we became like you know one of God, right? And it was written there. So things to remember for successful marriage life, which is to be, you know, to be bride of Jesus Christ. We need to count on Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. love and respect, mm -hmm. and live your old things, and try to be one in your family, and accept others' weaknesses, and be patient, and do not make idols in your family. Amen. This is the word of God. Amen. Amen.